back on the stocks at the club. Uh, there's no two ways about that. I've had a couple of meetings in the last two, three weeks um, with Flood Life companies. The challenge, as with everything, is we will get a proposal shortly that tells us how much it's be. I think the flood lines are going to be about a million pounds. Um, and that's if we build fixed mass flood lights. So I don't know if you've been to Lords and been to the Oval, the lights actually from hydraulics and drop into them cells or drop down to a much lower level. If you actually go for those, you're talking one and three quarter million pounds. So I don't think we can afford them. I think the million pound option is, is tight um, as well, but we've got to weigh up what John just said about changing the contest. I think the other side of it is we have to weigh up, would we get lots more people coming to watch cricket here, uh, whether that be 2020 starting at 7 o'clock as opposed to half 5 or the 50 over stuff rather than starting at quarter at half 10 in the morning, starting at 1 in the afternoon and allowing people to maybe have a half day of work and and come for the second half and finish at 10 in the evening. How many lines? There would be four columns, four columns each with about 45 to 50 lines on them. So I think that's the balance we've got to play up. If commercially it made absolute sense, obviously it's something we need to carry on pursuing. It's a difficult sum to do. The reality is nobody will absolutely know what the situation is but again here for 2020 cricket for a 5.30 start does does hinder people yeah. people who have to work and have to get out of Newcastle, Sunderland, Middlesbrough and get here for a half five start it's tough mm -hmm. would they make it a lot easier at seven o'clock yeah in those instances it would would it be better games of cricket I'll leave that to to John and these guys to uh, to tell us about it I was just going to say, this gentleman asked about the, the days again. If, if the 50 over cricket's on a Thursday, that's going to be hard to sell for a 10 o'clock start, I would, I would imagine. Scott, that would be hard to sell. That would, might be easier to sell for a, an afternoon, evening game. Yeah. So there, you know, the, the, where, where the fixtures land would probably have a, an impact on whether that's a commercially viable yeah. option for us. Yeah, and I, you know, I think with the fixtures, we I'm at a meeting in London on Monday about the fixtures, so we'll get much more clarity um, in terms of how that's exactly going to play out because it never quite does exactly what the ECP say it's going to do at the, uh, at the start of the process so, mm. so let's see yeah Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Yeah. The question here. It's on the subject of floodlights. Well, yeah. Is it likely that having floodlights could, could be a future criteria for hosting internationals by the ECB? I think we will always, at the moment, we're in a position with international cricket, if we forget the domestic stuff, where basically as a club we get weekend one-day internationals, weekend 2020s generally, and all of the other grounds get midweek, the ones with floodlights get midweek evening games. And that just seems to be where we sat. So I think we're limiting the games we can go for, but I don't think we'll ever exclude ourselves, if that makes sense. I think there'll always be the weekend... Saturday or Sunday, next summer we've got Sri Lanka on a Sunday here in a um, 50 over game and there'll always be Saturday and Sunday 50 over games. However, what we're limiting ourselves from at the moment is a Thursday night starting at 2 o'clock, finishing at 10. Um, it just gives you a, a different event um, with a different demands and different customers who want to come to that. So I don't think we'll ever exclude ourselves totally we just, there's only certain games we are able to, to host. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to get the panel so huge, but Scott is probably the person who uh, can.
can chat to us a, a bit more about that. It's still very much in the, um, in our plans. And Scott might. It is in our plans, and what we're hoping to do, well, what we will be doing in the next couple of weeks, in fact, is launching a fundraising program to try and raise the money to develop that ground. And we're doing that with, with partners from our sponsors and from other businesses and from individuals, so that everyone will be receiving yet another cry out for cash, I suppose. But the, the intention is that we have a nursery ground and we also at the same time expand the, the work that we do in general education through the foundation. So that that's, it's a project called First Class Futures and you should all be receiving information about that. But we are, we're very encouraged by the levels of support that we have received already from some of the corporate partners. So hopefully we can get up and running on it. It's and okay. It would be located over the back of the stand there. So if you, if you look at that big patch of green grass that is beyond the, the various courts and um, the football pitch there, that would be the intention to have it there. Um, we used to get a, a kind of review thing at the beginning of the season. It's like a nice newsletter communicating and telling us quite a lot about what's happening. That obviously sort of got scrapped this uh, year. We never received one. Is there any uh, idea about getting a little bit more communication? Yes, no, that, 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 if I'm perfectly honest, the review not turning out at the start of the season for a number of reasons was, and I can't put it any other way, cock up. That was the, the reason that you didn't get it you will receive it next season. It's always a difficulty, the review, because it does cost a lot of money to produce, and usually the, what was happening at the start of this season, as some of you will remember, is that our world kept changing almost on a weekly basis um, for a number of reasons that you'll remember from the press, so things kept having to be rewritten, and then it didn't work. Uh, Strongly unlikely, I'd say, at this stage. No, strongly unlikely. Yeah. Strongly unlikely. Strongly unlikely is the answer. There. Going... I think Surrey and one or two other clubs might be able to learn something from Durham's approach this season. Quite frankly, in all honesty. Yeah. Constant uh, revolving door in their dressing room. Yeah. Could I just come back to commercial matters? It seems to me that uh, an entertainment business that has events that go on all day. To be closed for business on Saturdays is absolute economic madness. And, and I know it's, you don't make these decisions, but Durham presumably has some say in the, you know, the, the ECB hierarchy. And you say you're going to a meeting there next week. I mean, is, do, do Durham have any influence in, in this? Area? Well, we've, like all of the other 18 counties, have had our chance to. ECB a couple of years ago went through, started a review in terms of how they saw the future um, fixture programme looking like. And we, like one of the 18 counties, had our chance to, to have our say. Um, how close is the, the new structure to what we would have done? I'm not sure how it's very close, really. But ultimately, we're one of 18. Um, you go to the fixtures meetings, you've got a series of different views. It's very different in, I don't know, Chelmsford and Taunton to to Durham, to Leeds, to Manchester, and there's just a whole series of opinions around the table. We voice our views, but I'm not sure um, it is the fixture list we would have exactly written were it our choice alone. The one, the one positive I would say on it, commercially, is that Saturdays are always difficult days for us at cricket in terms of getting an audience. And that's because so many of our cricket fans are involved with clubs. And so, no, so, in fact, our Saturday attendances are usually <coughs> relatively poor compared with other days. So that, therefore, purely commercially, I'm quite encouraged to think that, in events terms, I have a number of Saturdays now that I can use. So it isn't necessarily, on that instance, all bad news. No, I think that's true. Mm. Uh, and the, and the, the real shame is the family audience that we we lose. If you look at um, Scarborough on the yeah, Saturday, that was the lowest crowd of the week. You know, when you think of a lot of people, it was half, it was about 2,500 on the Saturday, there'd been about 5,000 every other day, because a lot of people left 
because they go off and play their own club cricket and do their own things. Yeah, so. All right, any more questions for John before we we'll let him go? Yeah, yeah one here. Now that uh, Emirates has sponsored Old Trafford, how do we stand with Emirates? Uh, are they still going to sponsor us in the long term? or? We have a, the, the deal we have with Emirates lasts until 2015. Um, we will therefore be negotiating, starting negotiating with them now about the future. Um, the relationship's always been very strong. I think that this season will have done us a lot of good in terms of the amount of coverage that we've had for the ground and the, the amount. I think that people understand the naming of the ground. We get fewer people like. Um, in the media calling it Riverside and more people are now calling it the, by the correct name which obviously helps us with the sponsor so at the moment the Old Trafford deal um, is a different deal to us because that, that's renewed year on year so they have to keep proving themselves, that means they'll do a good job on it, so it means that we've got to do a good job too Yeah, and you now get free flights from here to Manchester as well <laughs> <laughs> Right, any questions for John before then go? Oh, yeah I'll do with the first bit, if that's alright. Yeah. Um, the, the encouraging part from this point, from this season, is that we've, we've had to throw players in who, if we were honest, we thought were probably a year too early, and yet they've all stood up. Now, we're going to have to do that again. There's a decent chance. We've got a, particularly on the, on the fast bowling side, on the seam bowling side, we've got a, a pack of young seamers who we are confident have a strong future. We may be rushing their progress, we may have to, um, and with fast bowlers it's tricky because obviously there's a physical development which, you know, you can't, you can't rush the genes, they, they take their time. But um, with Paul Coughlin, who's had a difficult year with a bad back, um, he's played a little bit last year but missed most of this season as far as bowling is concerned, we're pretty confident him. Um, Andrew Ireland's been with England under 19 to do this summer, he's a, a seam bowling all-rounder. James Wheel is, a, is another one. Mark Wood's obviously stepped up this year. Jamie House has stepped up this year. We expect more and more from them. We're going to have to get more and more out of them. Um, with, uh, with the seam bowlers, it is a bit of a gamble because you will get injuries. We know we will get injuries. It's just it's a fact of life. So we need a pack. We need a, a large pack. Um, the job for the winter, and it's, a, it's an important job, is getting the guys who are 18, 19, 20 physically ready to take on... Um, First class cricket and uh, list day one day cricket um, successfully next year. It's, it's a hell of a job and it'll take them as individuals to stand up and it'll take us as a club um, quite a lot of work to get them ready for it. But you know, we've got plans in place and uh, we're optimistic. Confident would be nice, but I'll go with optimistic at this stage. Can I know the second part of that question? Yeah, Do you want to put that, John? Yeah. I mean, I've Yes is the answer to the second part of the question. Just like there will be a playing budget for, for next year, there will be a admin staff, if you want to call it budget for, for next year, that will be smaller than it was this year. Some of those changes have already been made. Some may well still be to happen, but we, we're working to strict budgets across everything that we do. Not, you know, it's not just the playing side that's been cooked. You know, a lot of the budget all of the budgets will be um, smaller than next year. And quite a lot of the, if I can say, the administrative budgets were reduced this year. Mm -hmm. I reckon if you, if you all give me a hundred quid each, I'll write it for you, right? <laughs> no, I'll give you No, I think one, one element, if I, if, I, if I can say... Yes. And, and thank you for that. And one, one thing I would say that would help us enormously, I think, is that if everyone that has email addresses gave us their email addresses, we actually have a paucity of email addresses amongst our members. 
that gives us challenges in terms of what we can get out to everybody and how regularly we can communicate. Purely because of the cost, actually it's not the cost of production of the materials, the postage that is increasing constantly and presumably after what's happening now with the raw mail, it's going to get even more expensive. So. It's been announced for the last fortnight on the time. Question over here. Um, Dale had the operation on his shoulder. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to explain what the operation was because Nigel would be really upset with me if I tried. Um, and because his family had moved back to South Africa and there was very little he could do having had the operation, he flew back and is recuperating in South Africa. I, uh, haven't, I have text messages from him on a, a regular basis. He's recovering well, um, keeping himself busy and enjoying um, being back with his family. So that looks good. Collie's good. Um, his body creaks, but he's okay. Um, I like to see him bowling one spell, but when he bowls two spells, then I think, oh my God, he's going to break. Um, but he, he's, he's okay, and he's, he'll be, he'll be uh, looking forward to next season too. Uh, yeah, Ian. Not, no, not just a question, but really <coughs> just going back to the beginning, John, and your highlights of the season in terms of confidence building occasions. That amazing run chase at Trent Bridge, when the players had been up half the night anywhere, and effectively turned what was a four day match into a, into a 20 20 match. And that was an absolutely amazing, and, and uh, it must have given the guys a, a tremendous sense of achievement to, to actually win that game. Yeah, the win at Trent Bridge was. Um it was excellent and, and surprising as well because you know it's, as you uh, took the last wicket there, it didn't seem like there was enough time. No, exactly. I'm not even sure Knotts believed there was enough time for them to lose the Well, they were trying to, to just the slow the whole game down to um, the end, they? Obviously, it was a Knotts side which had Ward and Swan in it as well, so it was, yeah. a, it was a full strength Knotts side in that respect. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure coming out of that game that, that would have been a, a huge lift. And as I said, there are, there are many moments which we can look at as, as key moments, but yeah. there seem to be about a dozen of them which. They can't all be key moments, but they, they all appeared significant at the time. Yeah. Can, I, can I just ask, after the defeat to Yorkshire here, which quite frankly I thought was a freak result, yeah. Root, should, Root should have been out twice, he was run out when he was only 68, I think, he gloved one behind in the 90s, and uh, they've been dining out on it forever since then. Was there ever a, a feeling among the players that when we get out of Scarborough, that's where we're going to right or wrong? Because I always had that in the back of my mind, that we wouldn't know where this season was really at, until Durham had gone to Scarborough, and I had every faith in believing that they could beat them down there. I don't think there was a feeling about right and wrong. I think the run out was marginal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you have to take your hat off to Ruta. I mean, it was a serious. Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy who scores 180 in the fourth innings of the Riverside has played pretty damn well. Yeah. We could have been better in a couple of areas, but I think we mostly we wanted. To, we, we felt okay. Ruta's played in exceptional innings and. 3.30 on, on, in the fourth innings at our place is, is, if you get them, then you probably deserved it, so fair mm -hmm. play to them. So there was no, um, there was no feeling that we'd, we'd been uh, shafted. I mean, we did lose a lot of time on day three, where I think we could have battled them yeah. dead out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. We were about 2.30 for four. Mm -hmm. God, I'm anal at times, I can remember these things. <laughs> um, and it rained, so we, we lost the opportunity to, to bat them dead, which, uh, which obviously might have made a difference. But. Um, mm -hmm. No, I think we were we were comfortable. Anybody has to get 3.30 back in last year, we think we're going to win it. Um, Joe played very, very well. Uh, fair play too. Yeah, that's marginal, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, any more questions for John before we get to win? Yeah? Uh, 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 No, it was strange, wasn't it? You know, to see an international game that had so much riding on it. You know, it was one one. It was the decider, and by the end of the game, there was about we were commenting today, 10, 20 percent of the people left in the ground. I think it was about 11 degrees, and I think that might happen a few times. Freezing down there. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, they're, they're geographically hamstrung down there, they're miles from anywhere, you know. Not like those <laughs> <laughs> Mary? How long have you been public transport to the Rose Bowls 
horrendous. Yeah. Please take that on the hamstring. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So we have concerts here. Oh, we have right. concerts here. Make some money. Yeah. Nah, you might end up with bloody Elton John here, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 right. Okay. Uh, yeah. We need to make a lot of money on the two concerts. That's one of our challenges, I think, going forward. Is that is how you you turn what is a very high level of interest and a high level of enjoyment into real revenue. And I think the points about lights are relevant to that. I think the points about it's always a gamble, do you choose the right act, etc. So there's a, but it's very important to us that this is more than just a cricket venue. It's the it's the it's the opportunity for us to develop this ground and to help the funding of, of, of cricket. I mean, cricket is always at the heart of what's here, but I think without events, that job is much, much more difficult.